the people who were watching this. And I remember that I was standing next to Duke Riggs, who was vice president of manufacturing, and he just looked at me and he laughed and he said, relax, he said, your knuckles are coming through your skin. Test pilot Jan Zurakowski put the arrow through its paces. For 27 minutes, he kept searching for the one design flaw that would spell the aircraft's undoing. But in fact, the first flight was very uneventful, and the only thing that I can remember about the snag list was that he criticized the position of two electrical switches. Oh, and he said he wanted a clock in the aircraft. I guess he wanted to come down in time for lunch. The arrow um, was really very advanced. Um, its performance at altitude uh, is actually better than the present day jet fighters. Its capability of uh, steep turns and uh, maneuverability and so on. It had uh, very long range and very heavy load capability. I don't think we've outstripped the arrow yet. Eight years earlier, Jim Floyd had given the country the ill-fated jetliner. But the arrow was different. Its customer was the government of Canada. Jim Floyd went to England to work on the Concorde, the world's first and only supersonic passenger jet. Many of his engineers were snapped up by aircraft companies in the United States. Others joined the American space program and put a man on the moon. Canada's aerospace industry has never recovered. Every arrow in existence was cut up for scrap. All the engineering drawings were burned. Even the tools were destroyed. It was as though someone wanted to do away with every last piece of evidence. It just broke my heart to see the arrow cut up too because they just cut the thing up with torches and uh, saws and so on. And to think of all this precision work that had gone into building the aircraft uh, and then to see the six airplanes just cut up into chunks was, uh, was quite criminal really in my mind. Why was the arrow destroyed? Why did the jetliner never go into production? Was it short-sightedness? Was it really the cost? The most credible theory is that American interests convinced the Canadian government that it would be wiser and cheaper for Canada to buy American planes and stop building its own. Canada has been paying the price ever since. <laughs> 